Today we are once again talking about the recent iOS 14 update and in particular we're going to be talking about widgets on your home screen and how that can be helpful for the blind and visually impaired. Hey guys, it's Sam. Welcome back to the channel where I help you learn how to live your best blind life. If that sounds good to you, please consider subscribing to the channel and turn on notifications so you'll be alerted every time I put out a video just like this one. All right, let's get started. So with the latest update of iOS 14, we now have the ability to add widgets to our home screen. And this is something that iOS users, iPhone users, iPad users have been wanting for a long time. Now, at first you might think, how is this gonna be helpful for the blind and visually impaired community? Well, it actually is, especially for low vision users. So the first thing I think of when I think of a home screen widget is something that I've been wanting for a long time. I've had it on my Android phone for years and years and years, and it's been super helpful. I've gotten a lot of comments on it, and that is a large clock widget. So now we have the ability to do that on iPhones and iPads, sort of. <laughs> Right now, um, at the beginning of October 2020, we don't have a ton of options out there for large clock widgets, especially digital clock widgets, but there are a few. I've got two here on my home screen that I'm testing out. I also have a third here on my second page. We'll come back and talk about this one in a second. But these first two here are pretty simple and minimalistic, which is great. That's what I want. The nice thing about this also is the default is the black background with white text. So that inverted color, which is traditionally tends to be what most people with low vision prefer. The other nice thing about having a clock widget is that when voiceover is turned on, especially if you have your widget at the top of the screen, it's gonna be the first thing that it reads when it comes to your home screen. Voiceover on, D clock, widget, 5, 20. So as she says, this is the D clock widget. I'll have all this information of the widgets I'm using. I'll have all of that in the description down below. The other clock widget I have. Digital clock, widget, colon. It's just Actions called- available. It's just called digital clock widget. You see the only drawback with this one is the indicator box will go over each individual element in the clock. It won't read it as a whole. So it just says seven. Colon. Colon. At two. Two. Actions of one. One. So you can't get the entire time all at once, which is a little bit of a bummer. I'm also not crazy about that style, that flip cock digital style but that's just a personal preference of mine. I believe this one does offer different color options though. That's kind of nice. Some of these widgets also give you the option of having the date on there. You can set it to 24 hour time. So you've got some customizable options. Now this third clock widget I have, it was actually made with Widget Smith, which is a very popular widget customization app. It's a free application. Shortcuts, widget. Okay. It's a free application and it allows you to customize, create and customize widgets. So this was the clock widget that I could make, but unfortunately I had to put it in with a calendar as well if I wanted to use the large widget. Okay, I've changed my wallpaper so you guys can see the widgets a little more clearly. I usually run with the black wallpaper because I want the most contrast between my home screen icons here and the background. So I don't, oftentimes I don't use a light wallpaper like this, but this allows you guys to see the widgets a little bit better. For the most part, voiceover works really well with widgets, and this can be a great way to have quick access to information you need. So like the time using the clock widget, or this one is weather, if I just tap that one. Weather, widget, Lexington, 76 degrees Fahrenheit, sunny, high of 76 degrees Fahrenheit, low of 58 degrees Fahrenheit, I get the weather and I don't have to jump into my weather app. I don't have to ask Siri or any of that. Of course, yes, you can do all of those things, but having the widget there is just a little bit more convenient, quick access to that information. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk about is using widgets with your shortcuts, your Siri shortcuts. This could really open up a lot of possibilities 
So in this case, just a real quick demonstration, I've got voiceover on shortcut and a voiceover off shortcut. And I've even color coded them so green turns it on, red turns it off. And once again, yes, I know you can do the triple click of the home button, you can ask Siri to turn it off. Now with some of the accessibility updates in iOS 14, you can do the double tap of the back or triple tap of the back to do voiceover. Yes, I know. This was just a, an example, um, a proof of concept, if you will, to show you what the possibilities could be using widgets tied in with shortcuts. So if I wanna turn on voiceover, I just tap the green box. Voiceover on, shortcuts, widget, voiceover on. Voiceover turned Actions on. Actions available. Sh if I want to turn it off. Shortcuts. Widget. I just highlight or put the indicator box on that widget and double tap. Voiceover off. And it turned it off for me. You could have these control all types of aspects of the phone. You can set it up for quick phone calls, quick messaging. You can even make some very complicated shortcuts using scripts inside the shortcuts app. I didn't go too deep into that, but you could definitely set it up to where you the same button would turn voiceover on and turn voiceover off. So there you go guys, so that was a quick look at widgets on the new iOS 14. I mainly just wanted to get you guys to start thinking about widgets and start thinking about how they could be useful for you. Okay, question of the day. Are you using widgets and if so, what is your favorite widget? I would love to know, I'm sure everybody else would, so leave that in the comments down below. Also, while you're down there, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, turn on notifications. And I'm gonna give a big shout out to my members. Thank you very much for being a part of the Blind Life family. If you would like to become a member of the channel, click on the join button right next to the subscribe button. As always, guys, thank you very much for watching. Sam with the Blind Life, I'll see you next time.